Hey there, I'm Cynthia and welcome to The Dinner Fix where I help answer the question, what's for dinner? Today I'm gonna to be making a slow cooker beef stew, uh, which is very simple to assemble. There's gonna be very little hands-on time involved with this one. Uh, there is gonna be quite a bit of cooking time involved. So uh, depending on whether you're making this on a, a weekday or a weekend, um, we'll kind of determine when you should start. If you're making it during the weekday, my recommendation would be to do this first thing in the morning and then just let it cook. Uh, over low heat in your crock pot or slow cooker uh, for the entire day. If you're making this on a weekend, you can probably start it around midday um, and still have it done in time for dinner. Um, but let me show you how I make it. Uh, what I have here is a, a three pound uh, chuck roast uh, that I'm going to be breaking down into one inch pieces. Um, and what I wanna do, well, actually a couple of other things. Uh, so I patted this dry. Um, and then what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be trimming it of any excess fat. So just looking for uh, kind of pockets of, of a lot of fat like this, and I'm just going to be trimming that off. I'm not going to completely trim the fat off of this uh, because I want to keep some of that flavor, but I don't want it to be, um, you know, like really greasy and, and overly fatty and, and rich. All right, so this looks pretty clean. As you can see, I still... Um, left some fat on this, though I have trimmed uh, quite a bit of it off that you can see here. So I'm gonna start now to break this down into one inch pieces, and I'm just gonna kind of work my way across the roast. So I'm just gonna kind of slice this into kind of one inch pieces across to start, and then break each of those pieces down further still. I meant to get these knives sharpened a while back and then pandemic hit. So now I'm stuck having to cook with these dull knives, but I will make the best of it. All right, so we've got kind of these one inch pieces. We're just going to uh, break those pieces down now further into smaller bits. So you end up with pieces kind of like this. As you're working your way through the pieces, um, there'll be times where you'll kind of just naturally have these pieces that um, kind of break apart because they're being held together either by fat or some sort of connective tissue. Um, so as you encounter these, you know, just trim that, that fat, that tissue off, just makes it really easy at this point. All right, so our meat is uh, nice and trimmed. We're gonna go ahead and season this with some kosher salt. And then we're gonna brown this before putting it in the crock pot. Um, what that's gonna do is in, in searing the meat, um, you know, first you are going to impart uh, quite a bit of flavor uh, that you wouldn't get just by throwing this kind of into the crock pot. And then also, uh, after we've seared the meat, we're going to be cooking some onions and some garlic down in kind of the fond left behind by the meat. So that's just going to add like another element of flavor that's going to mix with the onions and it's going to make for, for something really tasty. Um, I mean, could you skip this step if you're in a hurry and you're doing this at home? Um, sure, but it's not going to taste as good. Um, so let me set this aside and then I'm going to get um, a skillet over here going over high heat. And this is just a kind of large skillet. Um, I would recommend using stainless steel or something that is not nonstick so that again, you get that nice sear, you get that nice fond. It's really hard to get that sometimes on a nonstick skillet. So again, just gonna bring this up to, to heat over high heat. And once our oil is uh, shimmering, we're gonna start cooking the beef um, in batches, you don't want to crowd the meat as you are cooking it because what you want is you want plenty of air circulating around the meat that's going to promote searing. Otherwise, you're going to end up with stewed meat, which would be really no different than if you just thrown it into the crock pot and skip the step altogether. So for this much meat um, in this size pan, I'll probably be cooking this in two, maybe three batches. Um, but, you know, again, depending upon the size of the skillet, that's going to vary. Again, just make sure you... Um, you aren't crowding it in here. Our oil is shimmering now, so it tells me this is hot enough to start cooking this down. 
I'm going to start placing the beef in here. And what I'm going to do is any pieces that have like chunks of um, fat on them still, I'm going to put those uh, with the fat side down. And the reason I'm doing that is it's going to help render uh, some of that fat, which is again, just going to impart uh, some more flavor to our beef as it is searing. All right, so we're gonna let this be sear uh, for about a minute or two on each side just until it's nice and brown. And then we're gonna um, turn it and we're gonna continue kind of searing it on all sides until um, it's completely seared. And you know the beef is ready to flip when you can uh, flip it without receiving any kind of resistance. If you're attempting to flip kind of like this one, you're attempting to flip and it's sticking, that's just the meat's way of telling you it's not ready to, to flip yet, it's not brown, it's not seared. See how this is, um, well maybe you can't tell, but these pieces are flipping over rather easily, um, whereas some of these other pieces are putting up a little bit of resistance, in which case I'm just gonna let those uh, continue to cook until I can easily flip them over. See, this one's kinda stuck, we're gonna let that cook for just another second longer. Um, but as you can see, as I'm flipping these pieces, you've got some nice uh, browning on the one side, and that's what we're looking to get on all sides of this meat. All right, so as this meat sears, this is a good time to assemble some of the other ingredients that we're gonna be needing for this. Um, I have here an onion. I'm just gonna be slicing this um, into kind of three quarter inch thick slices. So just slicing this to the pull. giving this a peel and again then we're going to slice this into some probably three quarter inch pretty thick slices uh, which we will eventually brown in the farm left behind by the meat once this uh, meat has finished browning. All right so as you can see this looks pretty brown all around um, at this point so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start taking these beef chunks transferring them over to our slow cooker, leaving behind as much of the fat as you can. And we're just gonna repeat the process. All right, so our meat is just about finished browning. So I'm gonna finish tossing what's left of this into the crock pot. And what we're gonna do next, um, I'm gonna drop my heat down to a medium, maybe medium low. You can see this is smoking, so it's really hot. Uh, there isn't much fat left in here. If there were, I would drain any excess fat. Uh, but since there isn't, I'm just gonna leave this alone. I'm gonna throw these onions into our pot and all of this delicious brown goodness, the fond, um, Basically, these onions are gonna soak all of that up and that's all gonna end up in this crock pot. So we're not gonna lose any of this yummy flavor. And what you'll um, notice is as these onions start to cook, they're gonna start to release water. That water in turn is gonna help um, kind of scrape up uh, this, this fond. We're also gonna add to this uh, some cloves of garlic that I've peeled and just smashed with the side of a knife. And I'm just gonna cook these, stirring them pretty continuously, um, at least to start, um, until the onions have softened and they are uh, somewhat translucent at that point. That's gonna take about six to eight minutes. All right, so our onions have finished cooking down. As you can see, these are pretty soft, pliable, uh, but they're not translucent. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna transfer these to our crock pot. Just throw them, actually I can just lift this up. Uh, just throw them right over the meat. And make sure you get that garlic in there as well. All right. And then to this, we're gonna add a couple of things. I have here some carrots that I've uh, cut up into about two inch pieces. 
Then I have here two cups of chicken broth. Um, now, ideally you'd wanna use beef broth. I just didn't have any on hand. Uh, so I'm gonna use chicken broth for this. It's gonna be just as tasty. And then I'm gonna add a little bit more salt, some dry thyme, and some Worcestershire. I think I said that correctly. It's, it's one of those words I can pronounce sometimes and sometimes I can't. Um, so you're gonna add some of that, about a tablespoon. And then I'm going to set this because I'm going to be eating in about five hours. So I'm going to set this to high. I'm going to clamp a lid on this. Five hours, high heat, I'm leaving this alone. I'm going about my day. And then I'm going to show you how I put the finishing touches on this, as well as how to make a yummy mashed potato that I like serving alongside it. And of course, we are going to taste. It smells amazing in here. Um, what I've done is I've removed the insert from the uh, slow cooker just so I can um, show you what this looks like um, now that it's had plenty of time to cook. Um, as you can see, our, well, I don't know if you can see, but these carrots are pretty tender. Uh, the meat is just fall apart. I mean, tender, as you can see with the spoon, I'm just kind of able to smash this into small little bits. Uh, this is just about ready to eat. So. I'm gonna put a couple of finishing touches on this um, just for presentation's sake. I mean, certainly you can just eat this as is, um, but if you wanna do uh, you know, a little something extra to make it look nicer on the plate, uh, stick with me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take a slotted spoon and I'm gonna take all of the solids and um, put them in a, uh, in a bowl. I just separate the solids from the liquid. And then what we're gonna do with this liquid is we're going to reduce it um, so it makes kind of like a, a thick gravy as opposed to uh, a thin sauce. Right now it looks um, a lot like a in au jus and what we want it to look like is a gravy. So let me just finish here. This is gonna take a minute. All right, I think that's just about all of it. It's okay if there's a couple of little bits left behind. They're just gonna flavor our gravy. All right, perfect. So we're just gonna set this aside. Uh, you can, I mean, this is pretty hot, but you could cover this with, um, you know, some foil or, or plate just to keep it warm while we finish uh, prepping this. So I'm just gonna set that aside. And what I'm gonna do, I have here just a two cup measuring cup I'm going to pour all of these juices into the cup. And the reason that I'm doing that is because I want to separate as much of the fat from the um, liquid as I can. So uh, what we'll do is we'll just pour this in here. And then we're just gonna let that, actually let me put that back here. That might not be such a good idea. Okay, there we go. All right, so I'm gonna let this just sit undisturbed for about five, seven minutes. Um, and that's just gonna give time for all of the fat to, actually, let me put this here. That's gonna just allow for the fat to rise to the top so that we can easily skim it off. So just gonna set this aside. Uh, meanwhile, I'm gonna move on to, um, an accompaniment for this dish. Now, certainly you could serve this um, with anything you'd like. I like serving this with mashed potato. I just think, you know, the classic pairing of meat and potatoes is really tasty, uh, particularly with something like this. You've got, you know, just a chunky stew with gravy and, you know, carrots, you know, over mashed potatoes. I can't think of anything better um, in terms of combinations. So I'm just gonna, uh, transfer these potatoes into a, a medium pot. And what I've done is I've just peeled these and then sliced them into, oh, these are about half inch thick medallions. Uh, this is usually how I cut um, potatoes when I am going to boil them. I just find that they cook more evenly than uh, when you dice them. So I'm just gonna cover those up, or sorry, I'm gonna <laughs> add these to the pot, then cover them up with some water, add some salt, and then we're just gonna cook these until they are 
uh, tender enough to be pierced with the tip of a knife. Uh, that's gonna take about 20 to 25 minutes. Okay, it's been five minutes and let me see if I can bring this up close so I can show you. Um, as you can hopefully see, there's a thick, well, maybe not thick, but like a thin um, layer of fat that's risen here. Um, I'm just gonna skim that off using a spoon. So just, uh, actually, maybe you can do this. So again, just gonna skim the top right off. As you can see, that, actually, that fat, as it's cooled, has actually started to, to solidify. Uh, making it kind of easier to, to get it off. So we're just going to take that top layer off. We don't want that in our sauce. Okay, that's most of the fat removed. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pour this into a skillet. And you could do this in a saucepan. I'm just doing it in a skillet because it's going to expedite the process. I'm just going to bring this to a simmer over high heat. I'm gonna simmer this down until it's reduced um, in volume by half. And that's gonna take about maybe another five or so minutes. As you can see, our gravy or sauce rather has reduced by half. You can kind of see the ring where uh, the level of liquid started and you can see just how much it's reduced. So at this point, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a slurry. Um, to thicken this up some, right? Because this, while this has reduced, uh, it still could use some thickening up. Um, and what a slurry is, it's just a mixture of cornstarch and water that we introduce to uh, another liquid in order to thicken it. So I have here uh, just a couple of teaspoons of cornstarch. I'm gonna add a tablespoon of uh, just cold water. And then I'm gonna give this, actually maybe not with a whisk, because that whisk is huge. A fork will probably work well for this. What you want to do is you want to dissolve this cornstarch in this water because if you just throw the cornstarch into the um, into this sauce, it's just going to clump up and you're going to get just a big clump of cornstarch that is not going to thicken up your sauce. So I don't know if you can tell there, uh, that's pretty well dissolved. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, kind of gradually pour this and stir as I whisk it in to promote it, um, you know, incorporating. And as you can see, almost instantly that started to thicken up. So I'm gonna just whisk that in or continue to whisk that in. And then I'm gonna set a timer for about a minute. And we're just gonna let this cook for a minute or so until this thickens up. Okay, our gravy is done. Uh, so what I'm gonna do now, I think, look at that. See how nice and thick that is, this is gonna coat the meat and those carrots beautifully. Uh, so what I'm gonna do, you now off camera I had moved the, uh, the beef back into the crock pot just to keep it warm, you know, with the residual heat from the, the insert itself. Um, so we're just gonna add that gravy. It's causing a sizzle. So we're just gonna pour this gravy over our meat and our carrots. Oh man, this is gonna be so good. And this is gonna make a lot. Um, and the thing about this is it does freeze well. So don't be afraid of, you know, cooking a, a three pound piece of meat. Uh, you can portion this out and freeze it and you've got an instant dinner any other night of the week. Uh, you can also find creative uses for the leftovers. Um, I intend to shred up the leftover meat and use it as a filling for tacos that I'm gonna fry up, which I haven't tried yet, but I think is gonna be delicious. Uh, stay tuned for that video if it works out. Um, another ingredient that I'm gonna add to this that's optional, and I don't think I included it in the recipe because I didn't have them on hand um, when I wrote it, but just uh, some peas. I have um, some frozen peas. These have been thought out, but uh, these were once frozen peas. Uh, just, you know, taking up space in my freezer that I needed for another purpose. Um, so this is a great um, way to, to use those up. And let's give this a stir just to coat. And I really hope that you can tell just how thick and delicious this looks right now. That gravy is just clinging to everything. 
then when you put this over mashed potatoes, oh man, this is going to be good. Um, it's funny because, well, maybe not funny, but just curious because this isn't something that I necessarily grew up eating as a kid, yet I find so much comfort in eating this type of food. Um, and I know, you know, the weather's starting to warm up in Southern California, but we still had uh, quite a few rainy, gloomy, kind of cold days. Uh, so I'm going to I guess kind of cling on to that cooler weather for as long as I can because come summertime uh, this is going to be the last thing on my mind. Uh, but I'm just going to move this back over here get that out of the way and I'm just going to let that sit there stay warm until our potatoes are done. So speaking of those potatoes I'm going to test them. Oh perfect. Uh, let's see. Actually maybe not perfect. Uh, Okay, these need like another maybe four minutes. And then we'll uh, finish those up. All right, it's been a few minutes, so I'm gonna test these potatoes one more time. Oh, perfect. These are done. I'm gonna go ahead and drain these and then we'll add a couple of ingredients to kind of zhuzh these up and we will be ready to eat. All right, so the potatoes are drained. Just gonna go ahead and give these a mash with a potato masher. And you want to use something like a russet or a Yukon gold for this. Um, you don't want to use a waxy potato like a red potato. Um, they just don't yield as um, as good a result as uh, russets, which I think are, are the best for, for mashed potatoes. Well, and Yukon gold. They're both pretty pretty good candidates, but... Anything like a waxy red potato, there are some like waxy white potatoes. Those are some great potatoes for roasting, uh, but they don't necessarily make the best potatoes for mashing because they lack sufficient starch. I've broken up most of the big pieces at this point. So I'm gonna add to this, uh, you can do uh, milk, you can do cream. I just have some half and half on hand. That's about, I don't know, about a half a cup. Uh, we're going to add, these are going to be some rich potatoes. I'm going to add a couple of tablespoons of butter. And we're just going to continue to mash until these are nice and creamy. Okay, those look pretty good. Um, so I'm just going to give these a taste and see if they need any salt. They're, I'm definitely going to add some pepper to this, but I want to taste them for salt first. These are actually pretty good, but they do need just a tad bit more salt. Okay, we're going to add some freshly cracked pepper. And actually, I think I can get rid of that at this point. Just going to add some freshly cracked pepper. Oh, I'm so excited to eat. All right, that looks good. And then I have here, this is about two tablespoons worth of chives. Mm. She's going to just add another element of delicious flavor to these potatoes. I'm just going to stir that all in. You want to be careful not to over mash, stir potatoes because the very reason uh, russet potatoes make such good mashed potatoes is also the, the same reason you can end up over mixing them and then they turn into a gluey mess and that's because of their starch content. So you know there's a balance you want to certainly uh, mash these and stir them enough to to get them nice and fluffy and and smooth but not so much that they turn into a pasty mess and and this looks pretty darn good uh, so let's go ahead and give this a taste okay my vessel of choice for this is the uh, shallow pasta bowl just because it holds uh, the potatoes and you know the meat and the gravy really well so I'm just going to build a base of mashed potato. And of course, if you, know, you were making this for company, uh, you'd want to put that in, in something nice. Uh, same goes for the, uh, the meat. Actually, let me see. Yeah, it's not too hot anymore. You know, you'd want to put that in something that's going to present and make it look really pretty. But I think that looks pretty darn good in this crock pot. So just going to get a little bit of meat. A little bit of the carrots, the peas, of course those onions uh, that we sauteed 
uh, before you know continuing to cook them down along with the beef and then those peas uh, that we added at the end along with the gravy I'm trying to get a couple more peas and there you have it slow cooker beef stew let's give this a taste Now, I would recommend also serving this with, um, you know, some warm, crusty bread, a little butter. Oh, man. I've got some fresh baked bread waiting for me. Um, but for now, let's try this. Mm. Mm. My taste buds, my tummy, my heart are so so happy right now you want to tell your family or anyone you love them make them this so tasty i'm gonna keep eating um but i do want to thank you for watching uh, if you like the video please you know like it um, i also look forward to reading your comments so uh, please let me know what you think if you uh, make this at home uh, until next time enjoy